Imagine a world locked in ice, where towering glaciers carve the earth and freezing winds howl across endless plains. This is not a fantasy. It's the reality of Eurasia 300,000 years ago, a time when another kind of human ruled the wilds. Not us, Homo sapiens, but the Neanderthals, a species so tough, so resourceful, they thrived in a world that would break most of us today. Picture vast tundras stretching under a pale sky, dotted with woolly mammoths and prowling predators. In this brutal, frozen wilderness, Neanderthals didn't just survive, they mastered it. How did they do it? What secrets did they unlock to conquer an Ice Age world? And why, after ruling for so long, did they vanish? Buckle up, because we're diving deep into the prehistoric past to uncover the story of the Neanderthals, a tale of survival, ingenuity, and a haunting connection to us. Stick around because this journey will change how you see humanity itself. Let's set the scene. It's the Pleistocene, a geological epoch defined by relentless cold. Massive ice sheets blanket Northern Eurasia, locking up so much water that sea levels drop by hundreds of feet, exposing vast plains where the ocean once stood. Temperatures plummet to minus four degrees Fahrenheit or lower and biting winds sweep across landscapes of tundra and steppe. Forests shrink to patches and rivers, vital lifelines snake through valleys, drawing herds of massive beasts like bison, horses, and mammoths. This is the Neanderthal world, a place of stark beauty and unforgiving challenges. Unlike modern humans, who rely on technology and infrastructure, Neanderthals face this world with their wits, their hands, and their communities. They didn't have cities or farms, but they had something just as powerful, an intimate bond with the land. Every river bend, every rocky outcrop, every herd migration was part of their mental map. This wasn't just survival, it was a dance with nature, a partnership forged over hundreds of thousands of years. What fascinates me about this era is how it forces us to rethink what it means to be human. Today we measure progress by skyscrapers and smartphones, but Neanderthals measured it by the spark of a fire, the edge of a flint blade, the trust of a hunting party. Their world was raw, immediate, and alive in ways we can barely imagine. Let's explore how they thrived in this prehistoric crucible. Neanderthals were sculpted by their environment. Their bodies were a testament to survival in a frozen world. Stocky and muscular, they stood shorter than modern humans, with broad chests and powerful limbs built to conserve heat. Their lungs, massive by our standards, sucked in frigid air, oxygenating blood to fuel their high-energy lifestyles. But their most striking feature? Those enormous noses. These weren't just quirky facial traits. Wide, forward-thrusting nasal passages acted like natural radiators, warming and humidifying icy air before it hit their lungs. Think of it like a prehistoric HVAC system, fine-tuned by evolution. Every breath they took was a battle against the cold, and their bodies were built to win. Their skulls, with heavy brow ridges and low, elongated shapes, housed brains as large as ours, sometimes larger. This wasn't just brute strength, it was a physique optimized for endurance. But here's where it gets personal. Imagine living in a world where every day tests your body's limits. No heaters, no insulated jackets, just you, your clan, and the elements. Neanderthals didn't just endure this, they turned it into an advantage. Their physical adaptations remind us that humans, in any form, are shaped by the world around them. It's a humbling thought. Our own bodies carry echoes of that same resilience, even if we've traded icy plains for climate-controlled offices. If Neanderthals were tough, they were also clever. Their survival hinged on hunting, and they were among the Ice Age's top predators. Central to this was their mastery of tool-making, particularly the Lavalois technique, a method so ingenious it's like the Swiss army knife of the Stone Age. 
By carefully striking flint cores, they shaped sharp, precise tools and weapons with just a few blows. These weren't crude rocks. They were finely crafted blades, spear points, and scrapers, each designed for a purpose. Picture a Neanderthal hunter crouched in a river valley, clutching a flint-tipped spear. Across the plain, a herd of bison thunders past, their breath steaming in the cold. The hunter's group moves as one, using the terrain, perhaps a narrow canyon or a river bend, to funnel the herd into a trap. This wasn't luck, it was strategy. Sites like Cagney in northern France reveal how Neanderthals chose hunting grounds with precision, targeting valleys where rivers drew game. They didn't just chase prey, they outsmarted it. What strikes me here is the foresight involved. Crafting a Lavalois tool takes planning. You have to visualize the final product before you even strike the stone. Hunting big game like mammoths or woolly rhinos takes even more. Group coordination, knowledge of animal behavior, and trust in your companions. This wasn't a solo endeavor. It was a team effort rooted in a deep understanding of the land. It's a reminder that intelligence isn't just about individual brilliance. It's about collaboration, about turning knowledge into action. Neanderthals were wanderers, their lives dictated by the rhythms of the land. They didn't settle in one place like we do today. Instead, they followed resources, game, flint, water, across vast distances. Rivers were their highways guiding them through dense forests in warmer periods or across open tundras during glacial peaks. Sites like La Côte de saint Brelade on Jersey, now an island but once a towering rock formation on a windswept plain, show how they returned to key locations over tens of thousands of years. Lakot is a window into their world. Sediments there, layered like pages in a book, capture 200,000 years of history. Mild climates with lapping seas, brutal ice ages with exposed seafloors. Neanderthals used this site as a lookout, a hunting hub, a place to gather. They hauled flint from islands 20 to 30 kilometers away, proof of planned journeys. No flint on Jersey? No problem, they brought it with them, using every scrap before moving on. This nomadic life wasn't chaotic, it was deliberate. Different tasks happened in different places. Hunting here, skinning there, tool making somewhere else. It's like a prehistoric logistics network, with each site serving a purpose. What I find inspiring is how this lifestyle reflects a profound connection to the environment. Neanderthals didn't dominate nature, they worked with it, reading its signs like a map. In our modern world, where we often bend nature to our will, there's something to learn from their harmony with the wild. Survival wasn't just about tools or hunting, it was about people. Neanderthals lived in small groups, rarely more than a few dozen strong, scattered across vast landscapes. These tight-knit clans relied on trust, especially during hunts. Imagine stalking a 10-ton mammoth with nothing but flint spears and your companions. One wrong move and it's over. Trust was life or death. How did they build it? Some researchers propose a surprising answer. Music and movement. Not language as we know it, but rhythm, song, and dance. Picture a group gathered around a fire, their voices rising in a shared chant, their feet stomping in unison. These acts don't just pass time, they forge bonds, sinking hearts and minds. Even today, we feel this in group dances or team chants. For Neanderthals, it might have been their glue, a way to unite without complex words. Their vocal abilities add weight to this idea. Their ear bones were tuned to speech frequencies, and their vocal tracks, while slightly different, could produce sounds like ours. Did they have full language? Maybe not. But they likely had a rich system of sounds, gestures, and expressions. Enough to plan hunts, share warnings, or strengthen ties. This challenges the old image of grunting cavemen. Neanderthals were emotionally intelligent. 
their social world as vital as their physical one. Reflecting on this, I'm struck by how much we take communication for granted. We text, call, email, but Neanderthals built trust face to face, in the moment, with nothing but their voices and bodies. It's a raw human connection we've partly lost, and it makes me wonder what we could regain by embracing that immediacy. Neanderthals weren't just surviving, they were leaving their mark. At Lakot, archaeologists found bone heaps, mammoth skulls arranged with care, ribs driven into the ground like stakes. At Brunichel Cave in France, deep underground, they built rings of broken stalagmites 175,000 years ago. These weren't random piles, they were deliberate, structured, maybe even meaningful. Were they rituals? Art? We can't say for sure, but they feel human. Then there's Gorham's Cave in Gibraltar, where a carved hashtag on the floor might be the oldest abstract art known. These finds are rare, but they hint at something profound, a desire to shape the world, to create something beyond survival. It's not about painting masterpieces, it's about expressing something, leaving a trace. When I think about this, I'm reminded of our own need to create, whether it's a song, a story, or a doodle. Neanderthals, in their own way, shared that impulse. This raises a big question, what is culture? We often tie it to writing or art galleries, but maybe it's simpler. Maybe it's about meaning, about turning the chaos of existence into something ordered. Neanderthals didn't have our tools, but they had their own ways of making sense of the world. That's a legacy worth pondering. Around 50,000 years ago, the Neanderthal world changed. Homo sapiens, our ancestors, arrived in Europe. They brought sharper tools, more complex strategies, and perhaps a key advantage, advanced language. Sites like Mandarin Cave show a back and forth. Homo sapiens came, left, returned. Neanderthals lingered, but their numbers were already thin. Their genetic diversity low from a population crash millennia earlier. DNA tells a surprising story. They interbred. Modern humans carry 1 to 2% Neanderthal DNA, proof of shared moments in caves or valleys. But this wasn't enough to save them. Over 2,000 to 4,000 years, Neanderthals faded, their stable but conservative culture outpaced by Homo sapiens' rapid innovation. Language likely played a role. Complex speech fuels storytelling, planning, and creativity areas where Neanderthals may have lagged. What's poignant here is the overlap. For a brief window, two human species shared the earth. Imagine their encounters, cautious glances across a fire, exchanges of tools or mates, maybe even shared songs. It's a fleeting human moment in deep time. But by 42,000 years ago, Neanderthals were gone, leaving only bones and echoes. To bring this ancient world closer, let's look at modern parallels. The Nenets of Siberia, nomadic reindeer herders, offer a glimpse into Neanderthal life. They travel vast distances, following herds across the Arctic, their lives tied to the land. Like Neanderthals, they rely on small groups, deep environmental knowledge, and seasonal gatherings to connect with others. These meetups aren't just practical, they're social, cultural, even spiritual, with songs and rituals binding them together. I read about a Nanette's elder, Ivan, who described a winter migration. His clan trekked 500 miles, guiding reindeer through blizzards, using stars and landforms to navigate. At a gathering, they traded goods, shared stories, and danced under the aurora. It's not hard to imagine Neanderthals doing something similar, moving through icy valleys, meeting other clans, chanting under a starlit sky. These stories make the past vivid, showing us that Neanderthal life, while distant, wasn't so alien. As we close, let's reflect. 
Neanderthals weren't just another species. They were us, in a different form. Their story isn't about failure. It's about resilience, about forging a life in a world of ice and predators. They teach us that being human isn't about gadgets or cities. It's about connection to each other, to the land, to the rhythms of survival. Their tools, their hunts, their possible songs remind us that we too are part of nature, not above it. So next time you're out in the wild, maybe hiking a trail or staring at a river, think of them. The Neanderthals walk those same lands, their lives a testament to what it means to endure. Let's carry that lesson forward. Stay connected, stay adaptable, and never lose your place in the world's great story. Thanks for joining me on this journey. Hit that like button, subscribe, and let's keep exploring the past together.